What does the Bible say about Lilith? Is she really the first wife of Adam? You're just about to find out. Hello everyone, I'm Angela and welcome to my channel. I'm a PhD and a university lecturer, and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic, hystericism, paganism, shamanism, and related currents. In this video, we are going to talk about Lilith and her representation in the Bible. Lilith, rebellious demon, pagan deity, feminist icon even. But what does the Bible really say about her? What role does she play? In Jewish and Christian folklore, Lilith is depicted as the first and disobedient wife of Adam. Interestingly though, this concept is nowhere to be found in either the Hebrew Bible or the New Testament. This perception of Lilith, in fact, derives from rabbinic interpretations of the Genesis stories. In these passages, you find two different stories of the creation. In the first one, God creates the Adam, as in humankind, both male and female. Whereas in the second story, you have God creating Adam, the first man, and then Eve, the first woman from his rib. In an attempt to read two subsequent and different accounts of God's creation as one coherent narrative, the idea of the Adam as being comprised of the well-known first man Adam and another woman arose. The concept of Lilith being this woman and the first wife of Adam, who then disappears from creation due to her rebellious nature, was possibly informed by accounts of this figure found in Talmudic literature and Aramaic incantation texts uncovered in Nippur, in Babylon. The only occurrence of Lilith in the Bible is found in one of the books of the Hebrew Bible, also known as the Old Testament by Christians, and specifically in Isaiah 34, 14, as part of a narrative that describes the ruins of Adam after the divine judgment. And the passage says, the wild beasts of the desert shall meet with the howlers, and the wild goats shall call to each other. Lilith shall settle there, and shall find a place of rest. There shall the owl nest, and lay and hatch, and brood in its shadow. It's important to notice that some translators, redactors of this passage kept the term Lilith while others rendered it as a donkey centaur or as a lamia, a Greek child-eating female demon. In the Qumran rolls, Lilith also appears in its plural form as Liliot. So the biblical Lilith clearly refers to the Mesopotamian demon. As the Gruiter suggests, Isaiah 34 is likely a text dating back to the Persian period, and hence possibly authored by a Jewish scribe in exile in Babylon, learning there about the demoness and placing her as a character inhabiting the ruins of a desolate wilderness brought about by the God of the Bible. Lilith is probably an adaptation of the Akkadian Lilithu, which comes from the Sumerian Lil. She appears for the first time in a Sumerian text on Gilgamesh, as a female demon linked to the stormy winds. Akkadian texts show the triad of demons, Lilu, Lilitu, and Vardat Lili, as ruling over the winds and living in ruins, which might explain why in the Qumran rules Lilith appears in the plural form. The latter two of the triad, Lilithu and Vardat Lili, are also related to sexual fears and fantasies, and they all seduce and kill young men. Lilithu cannot bear children. In fact, she kills them with poison that comes from her breasts. 
Due to these features, she had been associated to Lamashtu since the second millennium BCE. To sum it up, Lilith is only found in the Bible as, depending on the translation, a demon, a spirit, or a night bird, populating the ruins of the city of Adam after the divine judgment. The figure of Lilith as a rebellious woman is inspired by a number of different texts and folk tales that have been employed to interpret the two different accounts of the creation in the book of Genesis as one coherent story. Lilith as the first wife of Adam is therefore not present in the Bible, but a product of later interpretations mixing folklore, Talmudic material, and Babylonian texts to make the biblical creation into a Unitarian narrative. So, what do you think? Was this surprising to you? Let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know if you'd be interested in knowing more about Lilith. For instance, the engagement with this figure on the part of contemporary pagans the feminist reinterpretations, as well as what the Talmud and other Aramaic texts say about her. Before wrapping up, allow me to welcome to my inner symposium my new patrons. Thank you so much for pledging to my patron. I'm elated and really proud of the community we are creating. And it is thanks to you, to those who just pledged and those who stay pledged, that this project is possible. So this is it for today's video. If you liked it, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell so that you will never miss a new video from me. And as always, stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now.